So hi and welcome everybody, welcome back to the lecture of wireless security course. In today's lecture, we will continue talking about wireless physical security, more specifically physical layer security. So in the previous lectures, we introduced you to this domain. We in the content that we have to cover, we mentioned that we are going to give you examples of security techniques that can that exploit adaptation, optimization, and artificial signal injection and secret key generation in different domains, time, frequency, space, code, and so forth. But we didn't give you examples. We just introduced you to the to the import to the main concept of physical air security, and uh, we exactly mentioned the we explained the why why we need physical air security and why crypto is not enough. And we mentioned several reasons, and we convinced you that uh, physical air encryption is not enough currently in the future and specifically for emerging new wireless networks like Internet of Things. And the reason for that, because the encryption methods are sophisticated and complex and they consume the resources of the Internet of Things device. And we need to come up with much better techniques that can that can reduce this burden on the Internet of Things device, maybe shift this complexity at the base station and make it super easy for the Internet of Things to decode while maintaining sure, while making sure that nobody can take intercept or uh, decrypt the data. So, and we mentioned some other reason, reason regard, regarding new application, regarding quantum computing and the, the, the emerging application, the Internet of Things, the 5G. But now, uh, we, we, we stopped here, I believe, uh, on defining some of the key terms and key concepts, key terms that we usually face and encounter in physical layer security. So let's together read this generic definition of physical layer security. So physical layer security has emerged as a novel concept that can integrate, complement, and may even substitute or replace encryption-based schemes. So let's just stop here and look at this that's uh, written in red color and see what's the meaning of this. So can integrate or complement. So what, what what's the meaning of this? So I highlighted it in red to separate, to separate this sentence into two. The first part is physical layer security can complement encryption-based schemes or physical layer security can substitute or replace encryption-based schemes. So there is an argument in the literature among researchers, among experts in physical layer security. Some people advocating the first sentence and says that uh, physical layer security can complement encryption. You cannot totally depend on it. You have to, you have, to have encryption but physical layer security is just like an additional security level that can be implemented or applied at the physical layer and it can make things more secure by introducing another level of security. But what's the problem with this approach? The problem with this is, is that you add more complexity to your system and more overhead for, and just for making things more secure, more complex you are not reducing the overhead of the whole system. So what's the implication of this? This means that this, if, if you consider security like this, this means that this not gonna solve the problem of Internet of Things networks. However, the people and the, the other group which says that physical layer security can replace encryption based scheme in this case, they, they say that in, you don't need to use encryption at the upper layers. You just do something at the physical layer. And this thing that you will introduce to the system will, will ensure the confidentiality and sometimes the authentication of your transmitted data. And for me personally, and if since I worked on this area, I am 
kind of favoring the other group, the second group that says that physical layer security can replace and should replace encryption-based schemes because to me, it this statement, this second phrase makes more sense because it, if, if, you, if you design a physical layer security scheme or technique that can be applied only at the physical layer, this means that you don't need to use encryption and you reduce the overhead coming from the application, the network, the Mac, maybe the transport, and you are totally depending on the security level applied at the physical. So what, what's the implication of this? This means that you don't have too much overhead on your OSI layer, yes? And this means that this solution, if you implement it properly, can be suitable for Internet of Things networks and sensors. And really, at that point, this makes sense. Now, do you have any proof? Now, someone might ask me, do you have any proof? Because the people are saying, no, it should be used alongside encryption. I'm saying it should be used independently as a, stand as a standalone solution. So we have proofs for this. We have techniques that, does we have techniques that do not require any encryption-based schemes. They just can work and ensure confidentiality without the need for any any stuff related to encryption and decryption and the key sharing and these these types of uh, these types of approaches that are sophisticated on the internet for an internet of things device that's limited in terms of resources now what, what, now the reason why we need to replace it why we need to replace encryption why encryption is not good we explained it now encryption needs to be replaced because it suffers from many drawbacks and practical issues in future wireless systems, such as Internet of Things, mainly Internet of Things. And some people, uh, when when you talk to some people and ask them to describe to you the current wireless standard or the current uh, 5G technology, where is, it where is it heading and what's going on in this domain, they will tell you that in the previous four generations, we were designing networks and applications for a human to talk with each other, to connect with each other, to send information to each other. But right now, 5G, 6G and beyond, things are gonna be tailored tailored and designed specifically uh, to, to machines to talk to each other. These machines will be under the control of human beings, of course, and they will be serving the needs of a human. But at the end of the day, those machines that we will, we will that will form and cause most of the communication and, and produce most of the traffic in the network. Like if you remember with me, the, five, the main three 5G services, the massive machine type communication and the ultra reliable low latency communication, or, or some people call them massive IoT or critical IoT. Uh, so I, those are two main services that are dedicated to machines to talk with each other. So the communication is going to be mostly in the future is going to be uh, for machines and people will be more dependent and more heavily uh, using these Internet of Things devices because they facilitate their lives and they do most of the work and automate so many tasks, especially when you combine it with AI. And that's the reason why encryption, even if it's even if it's secure, even if it's really good solution right now, it's not gonna be good for the low complexity Internet of Things devices in the future, which are gonna fall, which are gonna really be significant part of our network. So now we understand the why, we understand the, the conflict between uh, the two groups of physical layer security experts, the ones who's behind complement term and the ones who are behind the replace term. Now, what's the essential idea of physical layer security? Basically, you need to utilize some of the features and characteristics of the wireless channel. And these features include randomness, special decorrelation, TDD, reciprocity, and diversity. Along with the physical layer, along with the channel impairments, including noise, fading, interference, dispersion, Doppler, and so forth, to guarantee confidential data transmission to the legitimate users with the presence of an eavesdropper who's trying to intercept the communication. 
Now you see these terms that I highlighted in blue that I will ask them in the test maybe. Randomness, special decorrelation, TDD, reciprocity, diversity. What, what do they mean? I mean, most of you, especially the ones who are new to wireless or new to security at the physical layer, they are not familiar with these terms. But these terms are critical, very critical to, 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 to enable the physical layer security functionality. First one is randomness. Your channel, the wireless channel between the transmitter and receiver, usually is modeled as a random distribution. Sometimes, like the distribution is Gaussian, Israeli, Israelian, whatever. And the channel nature, the wireless medium that you communicate, you communicate over, is changing based on the location, it's changing based on many factors. Like if the receiver moves few few centimeters, the channel observation will change. What do we mean by the channel observation? The channel observation means the response of the medium around you, the wireless medium, to the transmitted to the transmitted signal. The transmitted signal you transmit at at t equals zero. Is it the same as the signal that you receive at the receiver at t equal uh, one second? So 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 you are going to see a difference. This difference is caused by the channel. To receive your data correctly, you need to know the channel and compensate this effect. The good thing about this, randomness is, is something that we desire to see in security. Your data should, your data should be randomized and your key should be updated frequently. You should not repeat using it again because it, it degrades the security level of your scheme. So randomness inherently is good for security. And randomness is something natural in wireless systems, in wireless channels. That's why we like it and this property we exploit it significantly to, 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 to apply physical air security techniques. It can help uh, make physical air security techniques work properly. The second term, which is special decorrelation. So I, I assume that you are taking notes because the definition of these terms are, uh, the definitions are really important and we need to clearly understand them so that we don't confuse between these terms and other terms that we will talk about later on. And we understand them from now on because afterwards I will just be using the terms and I will not define them anymore. So the special decorrelation, what's the, what, what's the meaning of special decorrelation? Special decorrelation means when you have two receivers, let's say receiver one and receiver two, you, you, have, you have here, you have your handset at location A, this is location A, and this is a receiver, uh, receiver one, and you have another receiver here, receiver P, at a different location. So just because they are in different locations, just because they are separated by more than half wavelength, half wavelength, more than half wavelength, this 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 device, this handset, handset A, will have a channel response that's completely different than the channel response at B. They might be correlated if they are close to each other, if the channel is not random enough, if there is, uh, if the channel is static, but at eventually this is a physical phenomenon. If two receivers, if two devices are separated by more than half wavelength, then they will experience different channel response. What does this mean? This means that each location has its own unique channel response. So what's the implication of this? Think of this like your fingerprint. Each human being has his own DNA that can produce his own unique fingerprint. The same thing with the location of the devices in wireless networks. Your location, based on your location, you get a channel response that's unique only to you. Nobody, nobody else in the network is gonna have that, that exact channel response. So you can you kind of exploit this, you exploit this uh, feature, and you design your security technique uh, to make use of this. So 
so for example, if I want to transmit something, I would rather optimize it and adapt it according to my legitimate receiver, which whose channel is different than the channel of the eavesdropper, for example. And that's very critical, unique feature that enables the concept of physical layer security. If we didn't have this feature, it would be really hard to to come up with physical layer security techniques. It's so critical. Now, what's the, the third term that we need to define it is the reciprocity of the channel, the TDD reciprocity, time division duplex reciprocity. So now we have two types of systems. We have what we call TDD systems and FDD system. In TDDs, in TDD systems, the, the uplink and downlink they, they they use the same frequency. It's the same frequency for uplink and downlink. So how do they split the data? How do they multiplex the data? They split it in time domain. So for example, the uplink can send in slot one, the downlink can send its data on slot two or three or whatever. And both use the same frequency. Now, if you took wireless, communication course, or if you are familiar with wireless communication systems, the channel response usually depends significantly on the frequency that you operate on. So the channel response at frequency equal 900 megahertz is not the same as the channel response of the same signal at frequency equal to 3 gigahertz. You, you are going to experience different delay, different multipath, different received signal. And this is unique to the frequency. Each frequency has its own response, its own effect. Why is that? Because each, each frequency has different wavelengths. And since it has different wavelengths, some frequencies can penetrate easily through objects or obstacles and some other frequencies they cannot even penetrate through very i mean the just little window or little wall or little object in front of them like millimeter wave that operate at 60 gigahertz they cannot penetrate your your room wall they they, they get confined and stuck inside your room usually so this depends on the frequency and we explain this in other lectures related to wireless. Now, now, here, here is the trick. If you, if you use TDD system, the channel response in the downlink will be the same as the channel response in the uplink. So when the base station talks to the user or the handset device, the channel in the downlink that the user estimates is going to be more or less the same as the channel in the uplink that the base station estimates. But when you use TDD system, T, uh, when you use, sorry, FDD system, frequency division duplex system, in this case, the uplink, the uplink will have a frequency that's separate and different from the downlink. So both uplink and downlink will have different channels will and therefore will have different frequencies and therefore will have different channel responses. And accordingly, you cannot use this, you cannot use the FDD channel that you estimate in the, to, 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 to implement some of the physical layer security techniques. Because many of these techniques assume that the channel is shared between the transmitter and receiver and since i told you the channel is the fingerprint of the receiver they can they kind of exploiting it and using it as a fingerprint that can really make their transmission unique just to the location of the legitimate receiver so you need to be uh, careful when you are designing security techniques for fdd systems not all the security techniques physical air security techniques can be applied in FDD because many of them they will not function properly. But most of the security techniques assume and they will work properly when you have a TDD system, time division duplex, which means that the, the slots are are split and multiplexed in time domain, not in the frequency domain. Uplink and downlink use the same frequency. 
This is the reciprocity. So when you read a paper on physical layer security and you read the term reciprocity, this means that the system uses TDD and the channel in the uplink and downlink, they are the same and they use the same frequency and you can exploit this channel to extract randomness. Good? Good. Now, the, the, the fourth term is diversity. Diversity is a very good thing in wireless that helps us really in achieving very good performance, whether in terms of pet error rate or data rate or reliability or any or some other metrics. But we found out that it's significantly useful and helpful in providing physical air security, not even in providing physical air security, but also in improving and enhancing it significantly compared to a system that does not use diversity. How can you, what's the meaning of diversity? For those of you who are not familiar with wireless, diversity means when you are sending the, sig the same signal more than one time. So sending this, the same signal twice, for example. Whether it exploits time or frequency or space. So you can send the same signal over different time slots, like ARQ, automatic repeat request. These systems send the first packet over time equal, let's say, T0. And if the signal is not received by the receiver, the receiver asks the transmitter to resend the packet one more time and uh, accordingly the transmitter uh, the transmitter will respond will respond to the receiver and send it again over a different time slot using the same antenna same frequency so what the receiver does the receiver now has two copies of the same data he combines them and it, uh, combines them assuming that those two copies of the same data packet will experience different wireless channel responses and therefore, the probability, the probability of decoding them successfully when you have two copies is more, way better, way more than the case where you have just one copy. And this is what Massive MIMO exploits. It, basically, it exploits uh, diversity from, ma from many antennas, from massive number of antennas. You have 100, 100 164. Uh, you have 200 antennas at a base station transmitting the same data. This means that this, your system will be extremely reliable. There is no way of missing any data bit because if it was, if there is one bad channel, there is another 100 channels that can be good. And the probability of, of having all the channels bad is really low. So you increase your your probability of, of receiving your signal reliably. And this very basic feature can help us significantly in security. Why? Because when you have when you have diversity, you can add random signals or artificial signals or noise signals that can hide your data, can hide or protect or conceal your transmission. And since, since you can design these uh, canceling uh, auxiliary signals or artificial signals or artificial noise signals or whatever, there are many names for them. Since you can design them based on the channel of the legitimate receiver only, so this means that if you design them properly from different from different uh, time slots or different frequencies or different uh, antennas, you can make sure that they cancel only at the legitimate receiver. So what what does this mean? If they cancel only at the legitimate receiver, this means that you are, although you are adding noise, although you are adding interference, but this interference is interestingly not harmful to the receiver, the legitimate receiver, but harmful to the eavesdropper whose channel is significantly different than the channel of the legitimate receiver. And since, since the channel, uh, since the, 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 the signal that causes that interference is dependent on the channel of the legitimate receiver, and uh, the, the channel of the eavesdropper is different, when your transmit signal passes through the channel of the eavesdropper, it will not cancel at its side. It will cause more harm. It will cause more interference. 
And if it has more interference, it means that the signal to noise ratio at the eavesdropper is very low, and therefore he cannot decode the signal properly or, or even see the signal. He will just see the, re the receiver will just see interference and noise. And if, if there if the signal to noise ratio is really bad, let's say zero zero dB or this, what do you expect from the bit error rate to be? The bit error rate is gonna be really horrible. Like let's say a 10 to minus one. What 10 to minus one means means in each 10 bits you transmit, you receive one in error. Is this communication enough to have a voice communication? Is this sufficient to have a video communication? Is this sufficient to transmit a message signal? This is not sufficient, of course, because to, to have a voice communication, you need a bit error rate, a packet error rate that's e less than 10 to minus 2, which means just one packet drop out of 100. If you, need, if you, if you want to have video application, uh, you need to have 10 to minus 3, which means 10 to minus 3 packet error rate, which means one packet in error out of how many? Out of 1,000. If you want to message for messaging WhatsApp and those things, you need 10 to minus 6 or web application or HTTP or web browsing or FTP. Those are extremely significant. So those are the key terms that I wanted you to understand and relate to. They are, yes, they are simple terms. You, you, you just go over them without realizing their importance, but this is super clear cluster cl clarification and explanation of their meanings. And I will ask about them. And they are so important to understand. You can not only exploit them for physical air security purposes, but you can also exploit them for other purposes in other domains and in other systems. It's, it's, it's fundamental knowledge. Once you get it, you can apply it any way you like. So the, now these are the characteristics and features of wireless signal of wireless system. What about the impairments? So the impairments of the wireless channel include noise. We all know what's noise. It's additive white Gaussian noise that's always generated and added to your received signal due to interference coming from the surroundings from nature, from sun, from the environment, from electronic devices, whatever. We always have noise. This is a physical phenomenon. Fading, fading is something that the channel causes to your received signal. Sometimes the channel is so bad because the, the, the signals, uh, the multibass signals are destructively adding, which means that when they are destructively adding, they, they are killing the power of your transmit signal. Whatever the power is, they reduce it significantly. It's like the loss in a copper cable. There is a certain loss when you transmit your signal through a copper, a copper cable. It's the same thing here. It, you, the, the channel here is, think of it like the cable that caused that loss. We have the interference. The interference happens when you have multiple devices communicating and using the same frequency. All the signals will be added on the same, on top of the same, uh, on top of one packet or thing, things like those, and this will degrade your reception. Dispersion also happened due to multipath reception, whether it due to, and dispersion, there are many types of it. For example, we have time dispersion that happens due to having multipath channel and you have uh, you have multiple reflections of the same signal that are reaching at different time slots and you can have frequency dispersion or doubler dispersion which can happen due to mobility in your wireless signals not only you are very far from the transmitter but you are also moving with a very high speed so your signal you receive it you are supposed to receive your signal at 900 megahertz, but you receive it at 900 plus 10, 900 minus 10, and so on and so forth. So all the now, now I explained all the terms related to the key concept of physical air security, and you you were taking notes of this. Now after you, uh, now uh, since now I feel you will be more familiar with these terms and uh, with the meaning of them and definition and the implication of them. Now. Uh, we can stop here, and in next lecture, we will talk about examples of physical air security techniques after I give you some more information about the system model and some basic information that we need to take into consideration while we are designing physical air security techniques. So thank you, everyone. Uh,
and we can stop here and continue after 10 minutes or 15 minutes from now. Thank you. Take care. Stay blessed.